So this is session eight. Uh, we spent session five and six really focusing on Eric, which she wanted to do uh, yesterday when we talked, um, focusing both on improving her communication with Eric. Um, she eventually does get back together with him, and also helping her with the transition to being in school without friends. So we're really focused on Eric in those sessions, but also spending a little bit of time at the end of the session encouraging her to reach out to some of her friends so that she feels more connected at school. And then in session seven, we make the decision that we'd like to move back to dad at this point. There's been some improvements in her relationship with dad. She had stopped visiting, but was interacting with him when he would come and pick up her sister. So she wasn't really going over there for visits, but had started to do some brief communication with him when he would come over uh, for that pickup. And we've made the decision together in session seven that we'd like to invite him in in session nine. And so this is session eight. And so part of what I'm thinking at this point is that I need to help <coughs> plan with her what's going to happen in session nine. Um, but I'm going to try and take you through an entire middle phase session. Um, and we may interrupt at times to illustrate or talk about uh, the, the decisions I've made or the techniques that I'm using. Um, so if it's interrupted, we're hoping that that'll be helpful for you. And then this afternoon, you'll get to see part of session nine where we invite dad in so you can see what that looks like as well. OK? Now I'm going to pretend that you're not there and get started. Hi, Tara. How are you? Doing better. Doing better? How have you been this week? Um, I've been pretty good. I think things with Eric are going a lot better. That's great. Um, and I have started talking to one of, um, one of my friends at school a little bit more often. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so thinking about sort of your mood rating for this week, mm -hmm. um, how would you rate your mood in the past week? From 1 to 10, again, 1 is sort of the best you've ever felt or can imagine feeling, and 10 is the absolute worst. Mm, I would say I probably feel like this past week was really great, so I'd say maybe a 4. That's great. That's the best we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about the time that you were hanging out with Eric or when you spent time with this friend, did you notice that your mood changed at all? Was either better than a four? Um, yeah. I mean, when I first started talking to this friend, like sometimes if they weren't really there or able to pay attention, I kind of felt a little bad afterwards. Mm -hmm. but, um, but then later when I tried to talk to them again, it made me feel better. OK. OK. And was there any time this week that you felt worse than a four? Mm. Well, I guess one time when my dad came to pick up my sister, mm -hmm. um, you know, before I kind of was getting along a little bit better with him, but then I feel like we backtracked a little. Okay. I want to hear a lot more about that. Can you tell me what your mood was like then? Well, it probably was more like a, an eight. Okay. So it went from a four to an eight. Right afterwards, yeah. Um, and before we move on to that conversation with your dad, um, just to check in on your symptoms, have you been feeling sad at all this week? Um, like after I talked to my dad, um, mm -hmm. I was feeling sad and just a couple of times, but for short, short periods of time. Like I was able to get over it this time. Okay. That's great to hear. Um, what about being interested in things? It sounds like you reached out to this friend. Mm -hmm. Um, have you noticed that you're more interested in, in like hanging out with Eric or going for bike rides and things we talked about? Yeah, we actually did that um, yesterday. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear it. What about sleep? How's your sleep been this week? Well, I think because I'm not coming home and napping anymore, it's easier for me to go to bed on time. Okay. And so I wake up feeling a little bit better. And are you noticing that you're waking up at all in the middle of the night? Mm, not really. Okay. So you're really going to bed OK and sleeping through. Especially after I went biking, yeah, because I was so tired. OK. Well, that's good to hear. I think not napping makes a big difference for you. Um, what about your appetite? How's your appetite been this week? Um, it's been good. Okay. Yeah. Good. And what about concentrating in school? <clears throat> Any things that come up with school this week for you? 
Um, they, I could probably do a little bit better on that still, Okay. but it's been getting better. Like when I was trying to think about how I would start talking to this other girl at school again, I mm-hmm. kept trying to think about that instead of my work. Okay. So um, I wasn't really focusing as much. After you were able to talk to her, did you find that you were able to concentrate more on your schoolwork? Yeah, I felt relieved. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Um, and this week, have you had any thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself or wishing you hadn't been born? Mm-mm. Excellent. Okay. So it sounds like your symptoms are really starting to improve. You're not feeling sad as often, other than the fight with your dad. You're more interested in doing things. We're still having some difficulty concentrating. And it sounds like part of that was really that you were really focused on sort of asking her to spend time together. Yeah. Okay. Um, So I'd like to start by hearing a little bit about the interaction with your dad. It sounds like that was a really difficult uh, point in your week. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened? Well, he came to pick up my sister, and, you know, one thing that I was trying, um, what we talked about before, is try to just start off by saying something positive, even Mm -hmm. if it's really short. So Mm -hmm. I said, hey, Dad, I'm happy to see you. Um, And then he's like, oh, you're in a good mood today. And it sounded sarcastic to me. Okay, so you started in a really positive way. How were you feeling when you saw him, when you said sort of, hey, Dad, it's good to see you? I kind of just did it spontaneously, so I was proud of myself for, for trying to say something positive. Okay. And his response again was, <laughs> you're in a good mood? Uh-huh. And how did he say it that made you feel like it was sarcastic? Um, well, I guess I'm not 100% sure, but he was just like, you're in a good mood. At least that's the way I heard it. Okay. And how did that make you feel when he said that? I was just... I was just kind of annoyed, like, um, I'm trying to, you know, be positive, and then I didn't really appreciate the sarcasm back at me. Okay. What did you say back to him? Um, I just, like, rolled my eyes at him and said, like, whatever, like, you're, you're, you don't seem to be in a good mood today. Okay. (laughs) Um, so I'm just trying to imagine this. So you kind of roll your eyes and say, whatever, you're not in a good mood. And did he respond? No, he kind of ignored me, and my sister was coming out the door at that point, so he gave my sister a big hug. And, okay. Um, and then he started telling me about this uh, trip that he wanted me to take with him. Okay, can you tell me about that? So he was just like, all right. He kind of ignored everything I had said and was like, by the way, I'm going to go to New York, and um, it's a four-hour car ride, and I thought it would be something fun to do together. How did you feel about that? So I was really excited that he was going to invite me along. Okay. Um, so, so you're feeling a little bit better now. I was feeling much better at that point. Okay. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe he wasn't being sarcastic. And I know one of your concerns sort of throughout has been whether he wants to still spend time with you and kind of feeling like having that alone time would be something that's really in line with your goals for the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So how did you respond to him when he said that? So then I just asked him more questions about the trip, whether, you know, I just wanted to make sure that it was just going to be us Mm -hmm. and not other people there and like where, what we would do, Mm -hmm. where we would go and stuff. So we were talking about it and he, it sounded like it was just really going to be the two of us. Excellent. And then he said, so, um, if you come, make sure you don't bring your drama queen self. And oh, <laughs> I was just like, what? Okay. So it was going pretty well. Yeah. Um, how did you feel when he said that? I just thought it was unnecessary. I didn't think the questions that I was asking him like made it sound like I was going to be a drama queen. So mm-hmm. I don't really know why. He would just come out and say that. And that sounds a little bit like the comments he makes sometimes. Um, same with the feeling that, oh, aren't you happy today? Um, just a little bit of sort of a, a little jab um, about how you've been feeling. Yeah, it's like because it, maybe he doesn't notice that I've been trying to be more positive. Okay. Um, and how did you feel sort of after? Did anything happen after that? Well, I was just thinking in my head, like, well, what is the point of me even trying to be positive or trying to make those first, like, positive comments to him if he's just going to act that way? Yeah. So it made you feel a little hopeless about some of the stuff we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I understand that. And so where did you guys leave things with the trip? Um, well, 
after that, I was just like, well, I have to think about it. I might be busy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come. And he seemed to take that a little bit offensively. Okay. And what, it, what made you think that? Because he was just like, oh, you're so busy. You know, you're in high school and you're busier than I, I am. Okay. So you got the sense that maybe he was a little hurt by you saying you needed to think about it? I guess so. Okay. And then did the conversation end at that point? Well, um, then I just told him that I am not sure mm -hmm. if this long trip is something that I could actually do. Okay. It just seems like a lot. What about sort of being with him for a long trip would feel hard? Well, like I was trying the past couple, the past week or two, just it's easier for me to stay positive if I'm with him for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I get really sensitive when he makes those comments. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm just imagining it that he's being sarcastic or not. So that's why it's really hard for me because I feel like I have to work a lot when I'm with him. So it's kind of draining. Mm -hmm. So the thought of being in the car for four hours, sort oh of gosh. being on high alert the entire time. I got to make sure I don't say anything or interpret something that he says wrong or else he's going to make comments again about me being a drama queen and whatever. Okay. So it sounds like for now at least the thought of the trip is a little bit on hold mm -hmm. and you're still thinking about it. Yeah, I haven't said yes or no yet. Okay. Um, do you have any ideas of sort of safer ways to hang out with him that would feel better for you than sort of just being in a car ride for four hours? I mean, I think that would be hard for most teenagers, particularly ones who haven't been talking to their parents so much lately. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like it would be easier for, you know, just when he comes to pick up my sister, those short conversations, that might be all I could do for at least another couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. What's the downside of those sort of short conversations when he has to take your sister to soccer practice and so he only has five minutes? I guess we don't get into anything. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like that might be both a good and bad part because um, he's less likely to have time to make one of those comments mm -hmm. or for you to run out of things to talk about, but you don't also have a chance to really feel kind of connected mm -hmm. to him. It's kind of like he could just be the next door neighbor or something, not really my dad. Okay. Um, so I understand that right now that feels like sort of all you can do. Um, you know, and we have him coming in, so that's something we can work on. Mm -hmm. um, but are there other ways that you think you could hang out with him that would sort of feel better somewhere between sort of a two-minute conversation when he picks up your sister and a four-hour car ride? Um, well, maybe I could go to the soccer practice with them because mm -hmm. my sister will be practicing, so that means I would just get to hang out with him in the bleachers the whole time. Great. Um, and can you think of things that would be sort of worrisome about doing that for you or that would make you uncomfortable? Mm. I guess um, I might feel bad if he started um, kind of talking to the other parents and not really paying t attention to me as much. Okay. So if he wasn't sort of giving you his undivided attention, that would be hard. Mm -hmm. Other things that you can anticipate that might be difficult that would make you feel upset in that situation? Well, I mean, I used to play soccer too, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's going to do this, but I would be really pissed off if he started comparing the way my sister started playing to the mm -hmm. way I used to play. Okay, so that would be like a hot topic for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and are there positive things you can think about in terms of being with him at soccer practice? Well, I guess... Because at soccer practice, there's something going on. We could, we would always have something to talk about, mm -hmm. like because we could comment on the game. And I mean, he knows that I know soccer pretty well, and so does he. So I guess it's something that we both know to talk about. Yeah, it sounds like it's something that you guys have talked about before, um, in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, so it seems like there would be something to talk about, and you wouldn't have to worry about sort of quiet silences like you might in the car ride. Mm -hmm. Anything else about doing that that might feel different or better than sort of just those two-minute interactions? Um, well, I don't know if this is going to happen, but he usually asks me how school is and stuff, so maybe I'd get to talk to him and tell him and, like, just be able to tell him that I've been improving. Mm -hmm. 
with other people. Well, that would be nice. I mean, it sounds like when we talked, I remember when we talked about him in the inventory, mm -hmm. you know, you got the sense that he asked about school, but it was to make sure that you were sort of doing okay. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't always feel great. But now you seem to have something better to report to him on. Um, so that seems like a safer topic than it was mm -hmm. before. Um, are there any other topics that you feel like it sounds like if he compared you and your sister playing soccer or if he was sort of ignoring you, mm -hmm. are there any other topics that he might bring up that would feel really off topic for you or would get you sort of irritated or angry? Yeah, if he tries to bring up like, oh, we should bring Sue and Tom and James to this and you should hang out with them more. If he starts like nagging on me about that again, then I'm not going to really have a good time. Okay. Okay. Well, I think what, what I'm really liking, Tara, is it sounds like you have a really good understanding of sort of what it is you would like to have happen and also what you don't want to have happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if maybe what we can think about doing in our session with him next week is really communicating that to him so that you have some control over it. it sounds like a four hour car ride doesn't give you as much control as you'd like, but you're willing to sort of take the steps to do a little bit more, but you want him to understand sort of what your expectations are for that interaction. Does that sound mm -hmm. right? Okay, so let's think a little bit um, about what we'd like to do with him next week when he's there. Is this sort of an issue you think we could communicate with him about? Well, he might be confused about why I even want to come. Okay. Why you want him to come in or why? Why I'd even want to go to the soccer game with them. Okay. Because that's really different. I don't go with them at all. Like, I haven't really been talking to them that much. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things we've been working on in here is sort of thinking through different solutions to a problem. And it sounds like going to soccer is one solution that you have. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm wondering maybe if we can open the conversation up a little bit more broadly with your dad and kind of talk about this goal of spending time with him in sort of a safe way. And maybe one suggestion you can make is soccer, but he might have some other ideas. I know you used to go to the art museum together and other things. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can sort of take a step back and sort of talk more generally about how you'd like this relationship to be different. Okay. Does that sound mm -hmm. like something that might be okay? Okay. So if you were to think about sort of what your goals might be for a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm going to be there to help you, and we're going to really work it through today so that by the time he comes next week, you're really prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think about sort of what you'd like to talk to him about, um, do you have any ideas of what you'd like to communicate to him? Well, um, I guess I'd want to let him know that I've been going through a tough time. Mm -hmm. And it's not just with him, so don't take it so personally. Okay. So maybe he could just, like, not have to rag on every comment I say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like that's a couple of things. One is to sort of let him know that you've been going through a hard time and you recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really great. Um, I think sort of acknowledging to him that you understand that you haven't always been the easiest to be around and that in the past few weeks you've really withdrawn Mm -hmm. um, I bet you if he heard that, um, he'd be really sort of interested in listening to you more. Maybe it wouldn't feel so blaming to him. Okay. And then it sounds like the other piece that you wanted to talk about was that you don't really want him ragging on you and making comments. Mm -hmm. Does that capture it? Yeah, because that makes it hard for me to want to talk to him again. Okay. Um, I just want to point out before Jamie gets into the setting up the role play, which she's beginning to do and talking about the goal of the conversation, to point out what she's done already. So you saw that she started out with the review of symptoms. <clears throat> she got the mood rating. Then she began to talk about how uh, she linked the change in the symptoms to tracking her Tara's improvement over the course of therapy so far and was able to link the fact that perhaps she's feeling better because things have changed in her relationship with Eric and they've also improved in terms of she's spending a little more time with her friends. So linking for the adolescent that the improvement is in mood is one link to a decrease in her social withdrawal and increase in some of her social interactions and the fact that she was able to work out some of her problems with Eric. Then Jamie, as the therapist, went into a communication analysis because in her initial 
check in with the patient as they open the session, Tara could communicate that she had had a negative interaction with dad. And they agreed that since the other things were going so well, they're moving to talk about dad. So then she went back and she went back to that interaction and asked Tara to tell her about the conversation with dad that was linked to her mood rating of an eight. So that's where the mood ratings can be very useful. And then what you hopefully observed was that Jamie did a very good communication analysis of what happened in that conversation. What did dad say? <coughs> what feelings did that elicit in Tara? And then how did Tara respond when she was feeling that way? And then thinking about how else that conversation could have gone and what are their expectations for each other and what would Tara like to be different in that relationship? And then it transferred into more of a decision analysis and thinking about <clears throat> what do you want from your relationship with dad? You want to be able to spend more time with him, but you want to be able to do it in a way that feels good and that he doesn't say these sarcastic comments. And so that led into very naturally into thinking about, is there a way to help Tara to practice being able to let dad know that these sarcastic comments are making her feel badly? And while she's initially thinking more positively about him, she begins to go back into her negative thoughts and not wanting to be uh, to spend time with him because these sarcastic comments make her feel badly. So how can she let dad know that these comments feel badly? And the car ride for four hours seems too big a leap to be spending time with somebody that makes you feel that way. So what other interaction can they come up with uh, like going to the soccer game and hanging out the sisters game where they can have a more circumscribed interaction and work on being able to uh, communicate more effectively with, with each other and have a positive interaction. So now Jamie's moved into the setting up the role play where she's talking about the goals for that interaction, what it would look like so that she can have a more focused idea of what she needs to practice with Tara for the rest of the session. OK. OK, so it sounds as if you've got sort of two things you want to talk to him about. One is acknowledging that it's been difficult for you and that you recognize that you haven't been so easy to be around, um, but also helping him to understand that the comments that he makes, in fact, make it worse for you mm -hmm. and make you more likely to sort of withdraw or respond to him in an angry way. Is that, mm -hmm. did I capture it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder also, you know, we've talked um, also about wanting to spend more time with him and really having some time one on one that doesn't involve Sue, it doesn't involve the boys, and in some ways at this point doesn't even involve your sister because you want to be able to reconnect a little bit with him. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's scary, and that's one of the reasons why we need to figure out sort of a safe way of doing that. But that is the, another goal, um, is to try to improve your relationship with him and spend more time with him, but him understanding that there are certain things that he says or does that makes that very difficult for you to follow through. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like it's sort of three different messages. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? Yep. Okay, so thinking about sort of those goals, can you think of a way that you might start the conversation with your dad next week? And before you do that, just to give you a sense of the session, you know, we're, I'm going to be there, mm -hmm. um, and we'll have a chance to sort of practice again right before he comes in. Um, but I'll probably provide some introduction to him about why he's here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to turn it over to you. So that's sort of the context. Okay. Um, and I'm going to be here, so you don't have to be nervous, because I'm going to be here to coach you, okay? Okay. So if you think about sort of what you'd like to, how you might like to start the conversation with your dad. Um... Maybe I could say, like, hey, Dad, um, maybe uh, you're here because I want to tell you not to make those comments anymore. Okay. And how do you think he might respond if that's sort of how you start out? Mm, he, maybe he would be like, what comments? Okay, so he wouldn't know what you're talking about. Maybe. Is there any other way you think he might respond if you said that? Um... I guess if I said that to him, he might get defensive. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that that sort of, like particularly he may be a little nervous coming in. He's never been here with me before. Mm -hmm. um, and if that someone said that to me, I'd sort of get my boxing gloves on and be ready to sort of fight a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that that's something you do want to communicate, but I'm not sure that that's an ideal way to start. Okay. Um, maybe I should just try to say something positive, like thanks for coming here. Okay. And what do you think he might say if you said that? He might say, you're welcome. Okay. I mean, I think that's a nice way to start. Um, and so if he says, you're welcome, what might you say next? Kind of thinking again about your goals for the well, conversation. He might be wondering why he's here. Mm -hmm. So then I guess I could tell him that I want to, um, I want to improve the way things have been between us. Okay. I think that sounds good too. Um, so just putting it together, sort of thanking him for coming mm -hmm. and then saying, you know, I'd really like to improve how things are going between us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you think of sort of a way to acknowledge your part in it? Kind of what you talked about as sort of one thing you wanted to acknowledge, kind of using a oh, gift yeah. to get? Mm -hmm. Maybe I could say like, I'm sorry, I've been um, kind of crabby lately. It's not personal, that's just kind of the way I've been feeling. Okay. Um, how did that feel for you saying that? Um, I guess that felt okay. It did? Okay. Um, and how do you think he might respond to that? Well, I hope he doesn't say, yeah, you have been crabby lately. Okay, so that's a possibility. Um, Maybe. So is there a way for you to say what you just said? Um, and kind of let it be known that what kind of reaction you're looking for? I don't have a great answer here. I'm just trying to think about it. Um, maybe I could just say, but I'm trying really hard so that I kind of end on a positive note. Like, I know I've been crabby lately. I'm sorry, but I'm really trying hard not to be. I think that sounds good. And it, it doesn't really give him a chance to respond yet, which might be important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so do you think, what do you think he might say if you said, you know, I'm, I know I've been crabby, but I'm trying really hard? Um, he might ask me why I'm so crabby lately. Mm -hmm. How might you answer that question? Um, I could just tell him that I'm struggling with a couple of different things. Like I could tell him about Eric mm -hmm. and how it's been hard for me to be in school without him and and how I haven't really talked to any of my friends because they were all his friends. Mm -hmm. And that has just been putting me in a really bad mood. Okay. Do you think you'd feel, I think if you could say that, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that you haven't really talked to him about a much that's going on. Does that feel almost like too much? Or mm. would it feel comfortable? Well, I guess if you're here, I, could, I can try it. Okay. So it feels like it might be comfortable. If it doesn't feel comfortable, is there another response you can say to, you know, sort of why have you been feeling that way? Mm, well, I could just tell him that, you know, I've been coming to therapy because he knows that I'm, I'm coming to therapy. Mm -hmm. I could say that it's because I'm trying to work out some, some issues and I started coming because I was crabby, but I think I'm getting better. Okay. So maybe not necessarily having to talk about sort of all the issues, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here in therapy because I'm trying to work on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to sort of reiterate to make sure we're sort of on the same place, it's thanking him for coming, you know, saying that you'd like to work on kind of improving your relationship and that you recognize that you've been crabby, but you're really working hard on trying to fix that. Mm -hmm. okay. Is that part sounding okay so far? Yeah. Okay. So if we think about... <laughs> sort of what our goals were, mm -hmm. um, which ones do we think we need to kind of address next? Um, maybe I could, maybe that would be a good time to tell him that sometimes the comments he makes can make me crabby. Yeah, it seems like a really good time because I'm a little worried that he'll do what you said before, which is, oh, I know you've been crabby. And so it sounds like it might be safest to get that in sooner rather than later so that he doesn't say something that quickly gets you sort of off course. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think you can word that in a way that he's 
likely to hear it best? That's a tough one. Yeah. Maybe I could say that if you, um, that I could tell them, I can give an example from last time saying that when you, when I tried to say like, hi, how are you? Um, I felt that you were being sarcastic and sometimes I do feel like you're being sarcastic to me and um, I just would appreciate if you were just straight with me and not sarcastic. Okay. I think using an example is a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, when he says that and you feel like he's being sarcastic, can you put a feeling to it, how that makes you feel when he says something that you think is sarcastic? Um, I guess it makes me feel negative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Negative about yourself or about the relationship? About our relationship. Okay. Like we're not going to be able to connect. Okay. Do you think maybe adding in that piece might be helpful for him, for him to really understand why those comments are so bothersome for you? Yeah, but I'm worried that he's just going to say like, oh, I'm just joking. What's the big deal? Okay, so I, I think that's a good concern. Um, so first, before we move to that, let's put those two things together, kind okay. of letting him know that they're problematic for you and why and sort of how it makes you feel. Can you put that together? Um, so sometimes when you say things like, I'm a drama queen, or um, when you say sarcastic stuff, it makes me feel like we're not connecting. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel like you don't understand me. Um, and if he were to say, I'm just joking, mm -hmm. what could you say to that? Well, I guess I could say that, you know, it might be, I, I could say that nobody's laughing, so it's not a very good joke. Okay. I can understand <laughs> sort of why you want to have that reaction. And it sounds like that's kind of the reaction you had when you saw him last week. You kind of rolled your eyes and said, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that reaction doesn't seem to communicate to him exactly what's going on for you. So how else might you respond? I mean, I think you're right to be upset and to let him know that you don't think it's funny. Mm -hmm. but can you do that more clearly? Maybe I could just say that, like, well, I don't think some of those jokes are funny because um, I am going through a hard time and just being crabby is not... Um, you know, it's a, it's a bigger deal mm -hmm. than just having, like, one day being crabby. It's mm -hmm. been like this for a couple of months now for me. So it doesn't really feel like a laughing matter to right. you. Right. It's kind of more serious. Okay. And if you were able to express that to him, do you have any sense of how that would feel for you? Well, I guess if he hasn't realized it, maybe he'll realize that it's a bigger deal. Okay. That it's not funny to joke about my mood. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if there's another piece you could add there, which is not only do I not think it's funny, but in fact, it makes me more angry mm -hmm. and more irritable, and I don't want to be around you. I mean, maybe he doesn't understand the consequence. It's not just sort of how it makes you feel, mm -hmm. but if his goal is to sort of spend time with you and your goal is, mm -hmm. him doing those things make that less likely to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you think adding in that piece might be helpful? Yeah. I could say that when you um, when you make a comment like that to me, I end up makes my mood worse. It makes me really annoyed at you and makes me feel like we're not going to be able to, you know, have a good time together. Okay. okay, I think you're doing a really good job. I feel like we've talked about so much, and I know we haven't gotten to this idea yet of spending more time together. But I'm wondering if it may be helpful to sort of practice what we've done so far, uh, just because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much. Is that something that you feel like we could do? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to pause you for a minute. I just want to point out um, that Tara is getting to her feeling statements, but she is starting with a blaming statement still with Dad. So ideally, you would want to rework that so that she starts with, you know, I feel upset when you make fun of me rather than you make fun of me and I feel badly. So we just want to make sure that we decrease the likelihood that the father's going to get offended by starting out with a statement accusing him of doing something 
and start out more with her feeling statement of it makes her feel badly. Uh, and it contributes to her feeling crabby when he makes these statements that he may think is a joke, but doesn't feel like a joke to her. And so these are places where, since Tara was struggling with that, you could pull out the teen tips sheet and sort of look together and think about what are some of these teen tips that you could use to help restructure the communications. And one of the reasons I was making a decision to move to a role play now was because I felt like we had scripted a lot, and I wasn't sure which pieces she was going to keep. And so I was actually purposefully not commenting on anything that seemed sort of negative yet, because I wasn't sure sort of what we would keep moving forward, in particular because I want to get to this goal of spending more time together. Um, and so normally I wouldn't necessarily move to a role play sort of mid-scripting, but it just felt like we had talked about so much that I was having a hard time remembering it. And so I imagined that it might be hard for Tara, too. Um, and so then I would sort of do the role play and then kind of comment on some of those um, issues. OK? OK. So do you think maybe we can practice what we've talked about so far? Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm going to be there sort of setting the stage. It's your chance to talk to dad. Um, and so far, it sounds like we've really talked about sort of acknowledging that you've been feeling sort of irritable that you're really working on being better, um, but that there are these statements when he makes them that make you feel disconnected um, and more irritable, mm -hmm. um, and that you would appreciate it if he stopped. Does mm -hmm. that seem to capture what we've talked about so far? Mm -hmm. OK, so I'm going to be your dad, sort of responding in the way that you kind of told me you thought that he might, OK? OK. OK, so why don't you start, Okay. Um, and we can see how it goes. Okay, um, so hey dad, thanks for um, coming to my therapy session with me. I'm happy to be here. Um, so I guess I wanted you to be here um, because maybe you don't know this, but I've been struggling with some stuff lately. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I've been kind of in a bad mood sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not just with you, so I you know, didn't want you to think it was just with you. Um, and I've been working on it slowly, so I think I'm feeling, um, I think I'm feeling and getting a little bit better. I'm glad to hear that. Um, but one thing that's still been bothering me a little bit is um, I feel like when I'm trying to be positive and be in a better mood, sometimes you make these comments. Mm -hmm that make me in a worse mood. Like what? Like, um, like you said I was a drama queen before and I was like, just kidding. Well, that's not funny to me. Um, that's just, it's not really, cause mm, maybe you don't know this, but my mood has <laughs> been like, my mood has been really bad lately and for a long time, so it's not funny to like call me a drama queen because it's not like I'm just trying to act that way. It's something that I can't really help, but I'm trying to improve on. Okay. So you're saying that I shouldn't say those things? That. Well, I guess it would help to not say certain things. Like saying drama queen I know really gets me irritated calling me crabby gets me irritated. So maybe I could tell you like certain things that gets me irritated. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop us there on the role play. Um, you know, I really liked the way you started. Um, as dad, you made me feel sort of more comfortable kind of being there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, also hearing that it wasn't just with me made me feel a little bit less defensive. Um, I think we can still tweak a little bit sort of how you talk to him about the comments that he makes. Okay. Um, like when you said, well, it's just not funny, um, I, I felt that you were getting a little angry. Is that what was, what was happening? Mm -hmm. And I know that that's why it's so hard to talk to him. Um, so I want to figure out a way that we can do that in a way that feels more comfortable to you and you're less likely to sort of respond defensively. Okay. The other thought that I was having as you were doing it was, you know, I know I said I thought you should move quickly to that piece, but I'm actually wondering whether it may be better to kind of move to this goal of spending time together. 
um, and maybe softening them up a little bit more um, before you kind of move to the other stuff. Do you have a thought about what might be better and might feel more comfortable for you to do first? Well, maybe I could try that. Okay. Um, so, because I feel like if he heard, I really want to spend time with you, but I'm concerned because you sometimes make these comments that make me feel crabby or irritable or sad. Um, as a dad, I'd want to do whatever I could not to say those things because I'd really want to spend time with you. So it, I might feel more uh, willing to sort of go along with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so going back to this idea of how you'd like to spend time with him, mm -hmm. it sounds like one idea you had um, was possibly going to the soccer game with him. Mm -hmm. um, and just to make sure it seemed like one of the things that was really important was that it be time just the two of you mm -hmm. um, with not other people around so you could have a chance to connect. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's a way to communicate to him um, a desire to spend more time with him and how you would like that to look? Um. I guess I could just tell him that I would like to start going to soccer games with him because we would get some really good one-on-one -on -one time. Okay, I really like the last part, right? Because if it's just I want to go to soccer games, it could be I want to watch my sister play, there's a cute guy on the other team. I mean, he might have a lot of explanations for sort of why you're doing it, but I think letting him know that you really want time together um, would probably make him feel really good. Mm -hmm. Um, and how do you think he would respond to sort of your suggesting that you spend more time together? Well, that one is probably an easy one for him because he's going there anyway. Mm -hmm. So he'd probably say, sure, come along. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you feel like he'd be really into that. Um, mm -hmm. Is there something that you would want to follow up with? If he says, sure, come along, mm -hmm. is there something you'd want to communicate to him so that he knew sort of what your, your expectations were for that time? Um, well, I guess I'd want to tell him that it's, that I'm going to actually be there with him and hang out with him and not just, like, not just walk around and talk to the other kids or have him, like, talk to the other parents. Like, obviously, we're going to say hi to other people when we walk in, but I want to let him know that I'm not going for a different reason. Okay. So really to let him know that the purpose is for you to spend time together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and do you think you need to give him feedback on sort of things you don't want to talk about or do, or do you think that's something you could kind of handle in the moment if it came up? Mm, I guess I could just try to handle them. But it sounds like the one thing we might want to add in here is really this idea in particular about these comments that are sort of joking. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be a nice way to say, I'm really excited to spend time with you, um, you know, but I've noticed that sometimes you make jokes mm -hmm. um, about me sort of being in a bad mood or being crabby. Mm -hmm. And those jokes really make me feel, what was the feeling statement that you came up with? It makes me feel kind of hopeless about our relationship and negative. Um, and I really don't want to feel that way. Yeah. So I hope that we can have a really nice time together and not have that happen. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like it conveys sort of what you wanted? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just to go back, it sounded like that gets us to the goal of spending some time together in a sort of safe way. Mm -hmm. um, you've acknowledged that you understand that you've been crabby, um, but that there are these things that he says that make you feel um, worse. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that you feel like we need to get in that conversation? That's probably enough to start with. Okay. Um, so I'd like us to practice it again. Okay. Okay. Um, and we're going to start from the beginning. Um, and again, we're in the room with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, so why don't you get started and, and I'll be dad. Okay. Um, hey, dad, thanks for coming in um, to my therapy session with me. You're welcome. Um, so I'm really glad that you came because um, I just wanted to sort of let you know what's been going on with me. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, you probably noticed that I haven't been in the greatest mood and it's not just with you, it's with other people too. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I'm really trying hard to work on um, because I want to spend more time with you. I'd love to spend more time with you. I feel like you haven't wanted to be around me lately. Yeah. Um, 
It's because those things that I was talking about that I'm struggling with. Um, so sometimes I really want to spend time with you and it could start off really well, but then I sometimes hear a comment, you know, and sometimes the comments that you make can make me feel really like things are not going so well with us. Like I'm feeling hopeless about us being able to connect. Like what kind of comments? Um, like jokes, you know, because I am going through something. I feel like I'm really sensitive to different jokes, mm -hmm. like saying that I'm a drama queen or calling me Miss Krabby or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe when I was feeling better, I wouldn't take those personally. But right now, you know, I'm not feeling that great. So I take it really personally when you say stuff like that. Okay, I, I say them just to try and make light of the situation, hoping that... It'll sort of make you laugh, but it sounds like it's doing the opposite. Mm hmm Yeah, it definitely doesn't make me laugh and makes me feel a lot worse. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but after you make those comments, I kind of just, like, go away. Okay. And I don't, I think that will be tough to hang out together if we have to deal with that. Okay. So you're doing a super job. Um, you've expanded on everything we've sort of practiced and, you know, I think you really helped dad understand sort of how it makes you feel. Um, the one piece that feels like it's still missing is this idea of spending more time together. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that would be something that we want to add in mm -hmm. next to make sure that, you know, that happens. Okay. Okay. So I've just been dad and mm -hmm. I just said, you know, I'm really glad that you said that. I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, I thought that that was sort of a way to make light of it. Um, mm -hmm. And thank you for telling me that. So do you think that we could try to hang out a little bit more so that um, we could feel like, you know, back to our old selves again? I would love that. I really miss having time with you. So I was thinking maybe, um, maybe I could come to the soccer games. That would be great. With you and Lisa. Okay. Um, I would love that. You want to come next week? Yeah. Um, but I guess, I guess we could, um, to make it, because that's an hour, um, and we haven't really spent that much time together recently, so mm -hmm. maybe trying not to joke around with me, would you be okay with that? Yeah, and, and please tell me if I'm doing it. Um, like, what should I say? Um... Maybe, Dad, that didn't feel funny. Okay. So that could be, like, the thing that I say, and then we could try to just start over. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I also want to say is that I, like, my whole reason for going to the soccer game is to hang out with you more. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'd probably get upset if we weren't hanging out together, if we were, like, each doing our own separate thing, kind of like the way we have been. Okay. No, I, I, I hear that, and I want to spend time with you. I'm really looking forward to that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so how did that feel for you, Tara? Um, it was a little hard. What part of it was hard? Um, like trying to sort of tell him to not joke around with me. That's just like, I feel like that's so much of his personality, it's going to be hard for him. Yeah, that's a really good point, and I wonder if there's a way to sort of acknowledge that when you say that, because um, I think when I was being dad, mm -hmm. one of my thoughts was that maybe he does make those jokes to mm -hmm. try and make it better, um, and so I wonder if that can be a way of sort of giving to get, kind of saying, you know, I know you like to joke around, and you're probably just trying to make me feel better, mm -hmm. but that's not the effect it's having. It's, in fact, making me more angry and irritable. Um, that may sort of acknowledge that mm -hmm. he may be doing it for the right reason, but just because of the way you're feeling, you know, it's mm -hmm. not feeling good. I don't think it would feel good to a lot of people to mm -hmm. be called drama queen. So um, maybe he could just not say, maybe I could just tell him to not call me a drama queen because mm -hmm. that's what, like, really pisses me off and mm -hmm. not call me crabby. But maybe I could try to um, ignore anything else that I think is sarcasm. You could ignore it. I think that's one way. But I think also, at least the way we played it, he was open to hearing 
feedback about how those things made you feel. Mm -hmm. And so maybe just sort of letting him know, you know, dad, that wasn't funny, mm -hmm. might be a way of not having to list the 900 things he can't say or only limiting it to drama queen and crabby when in fact it could be other things. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't think everything needs to get resolved in this conversation. The purpose is really for us to sort of start the process. Okay. Um, and, you know, I thought you did a really nice job in sort of making it clear that you wanted to go to the soccer game to spend time with me. Um, I'd like to sort of just talk a little bit about if it doesn't go that way and sort of what we might be able to do to anticipate that. Mm -hmm. um, and so as I was doing the role play, there were sort of two things that you had mentioned that he might do. Um, one was sort of asking you sort of like, well, why are you crabby? You know, I've noticed you really are a drama mm -hmm. queen lately or saying something like that. Um, or, you know, kind of saying to you, well, it is a joke. Um, or not being open. Mm -hmm. Do you have ideas of what you could say if he responded in that way? Um, I guess if he says like, well, it is a joke, then I could say, well, you know, unfortunately, that joke doesn't really make me laugh. It's not really that funny to me mm -hmm. because of what I'm going through. Okay. Okay. Do you think you could maybe let him know, not that it's just not funny, but how it makes you feel when he says that? Yeah. Um, so I could say that sometimes your jokes make me feel um, really bad about myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, one of the things I've learned is, is that we can't really argue with somebody's feelings. Um, so I could probably argue with you and say, but it was funny. But if you're telling me that it makes you feel a certain way, mm -hmm. I don't really have much I can say to that. So I think that's a good, a good response. OK. Um, and what if he comments on you sort of being crabby or um, really irritable with him? Um, maybe I could just apologize. Like, I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to work on it. Okay. And that's why I'm here. OK. Um, I think that sounds really good. Do you feel comfortable sort of in planning for this next session? Do you think it would be helpful to practice it maybe one more time with me being a little bit more challenging so that you have a chance to practice that? OK. 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 So I'm going to be still your dad, mm -hmm. but maybe say a couple of the things that you think he might say okay. in that reaction. Okay. So should I start from the beginning? Yeah, I think okay. you can start from the beginning. Um, so, Dad, thanks for coming to my session with me today. I, I'm glad I'm here. I feel like you've been really unhappy and irritated with me. Yeah, um, that's why I come to these sessions, and I wanted to let you know a little bit about you know why I've been feeling that way. Mm -hmm. So I've just been going through a lot, and it's not just about you. Like, I, I learned that I don't act like that just to you. I act like that towards other people, and I'm slowly trying to work on it. I'm glad you noticed it, because it's really been a problem. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have noticed it, which is why I'm here. Um, but I think that it might be good to start building our relationship so that we don't argue as much, and that we spend more time together. What do you think about that? I really like that. I mean, you know, you don't come over anymore on the weekends, and I'm not even seeing you for weeknight visits, so I'd like to be able to spend time with you again. Me too, um, but sometimes it's hard for me to spend time with you because sometimes it starts off really good, but then if you make a certain comment, um, it makes me feel really bad about myself. Like what kind of comments would I say that make you feel bad about yourself? Um, like saying something like, oh, you're such a drama queen or you're so crabby. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to hear because of what I'm going through. OK. OK, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I was just trying to make a joke. That's OK. That's why I guess I wanted to be able to tell you um, about it. But uh, I guess maybe we can try to hang out without having that stuff, without those kind of jokes going on? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll try really hard. You know I sometimes make jokes, mm -hmm. um, but I can try. I don't want to do something that makes you upset. OK, um, well, that, I mean, you're trying. I'm trying, too, so I'm not going to be perfect, so I can understand um, you trying. 
do you think you'd want to um, let me come along for a soccer game? I would love it. If you haven't done that in a while, that'd be great. And I guess it would be kind of fun to just hang out with each other during that soccer game, trying to, like, catch up on everything, you know, we've kind of missed in the past couple of weeks. There's some cool things that I wanted to tell you about. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, should I invite Sue and the kids? Well, I was kind of hoping it would be one-on-one, -on -one, um, just because we have been having a lot of trouble kind of keeping it positive together, so maybe we should start slow. Okay. Okay. That'd be really great. You want to do that this weekend? Mm-hmm. Okay. You did a really nice job. Not only did I throw out sort of like, why aren't my jokes funny, and you have been crabby, but I also threw out sort of inviting Sue and the kids. Um, and you handled that one in particular really well, just sort of not getting upset and just reemphasizing sort of the desire for one-on-one -on -one time. You know, at one point I noticed you got a little defensive um, and you were kind of like, well, it's not that funny. Um, but you quickly corrected yourself and I think then really made me feel much more comfortable um, as you sort of acknowledged that we were both trying and that maybe we were both doing something to this. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that's, that was really great, Tara. Thank you. Um, how do you feel kind of anticipating um, the session next week? I think, I think it would go well. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so just to make sure that we're on board, how do you want to invite Dad in for session? Do you want to invite him? Do you want me to call him? How do you think he'd respond best? Well, I mean, he knows I'm coming here. So maybe I could just say, like, oh, it's required. It's a family thing. Okay. Do you think there's a way that you can invite him that will make him feel sort of less nervous or sort of less defensive? Well, I could tell him that you're just a nice person. Okay. And that it's just for me to tell him certain things. Okay. And maybe even letting him know that you're trying to work on things with him and you think it might be helpful for him to come in. Mm -hmm. um, and that the purpose of that is really for us to work on improving things, not to sort of attack him or make him uncomfortable in any way. Because sometimes parents do get a little worried or defensive when they're coming into to therapy. OK, maybe I'll just tell him that, mm -hmm. that I would like him to come because I want to help make things better between us. Great. Well, you did really great work. And you know, I think thinking back to sort of the beginning of the session, we didn't have a chance to talk much about Eric and sort of spending time with friends. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like that's really improving your mood. Mm -hmm. And so while we sort of move to talk about dad more, just because we're not focusing on Eric and friends doesn't mean I want you to stop that. I think that that would be important to continue. So continuing to reach out and continuing to work on how you're communicating with Eric so that you can get the support from him. I think all of those will continue to help your mood. And so I will continue to check in and see how those things are going each session. Okay. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll see you next week. Um, we'll start just the two of us to sort of check in, um, kind of remind ourselves of our, our plan, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll bring Dad in. And I feel really hopeful that we can make some progress with him. Okay? Okay. Okay.